Hello everyone. Welcome to PipeEng.com. High density polyethylene pipe, also called HDPE pipe, is becoming increasingly popular in pipeline industry. It has been widely used for many low pressure and corrosive fluid system. For buried HDPE pipe, the pipe spec and the trench design shall be examined to make sure that the pipe will not be damaged by the external load. Here. We have developed a great tool based on AWWA M55 to help you to do the work. Please be aware that this tool assumes that the maximum external load applied on your pipeline will not be over H20 loading for a vehicle or E80 loading for the railway. If you gonna experience the external load over than this, we have a separate tool dedicated for that purpose. All right. As always, let's use an example to show you how to use it. Let's say we have a 24-inch um, HDP pipeline that ha is going to cross a railway. So here in the first section, we can put a lot of pipe input data here, and uh, this is a kind of standard user interface for all PE pipe calculation tools. We have a drop down to show the pipe dimension standard. As we know for HDP, uh, it can be the um, outer diameter driven standard, which is iron pipe size, also called IPS, or it could be uh, internal diameter driven dimensions. And that is, that is the, the ductile iron pipe size, which is DIPS. So in this case, we assume uh, it's, it's more common um, to have IPS standard so let's select the IPA uh, IPS here and for the pipe size uh, let's assume it's going to be 24 inch um, for the DR uh, because it's a, it's a railway crossing we we don't want to do you have a very thin wall pipe uh, for the railway crossing so we we can start checking by DR11 and the pipe material quote um, Right now, I think in the industry, PE4710 is, is preferred. So, uh, and also has the best mechanical properties uh, and also strength. So let's select the PE4710. For modules elasti elasticity of pipe. And in this case, uh, we would like to consider long-term to be conservative. And as, as you can see here, the modulus of elasticity of pipe will change by itself once you select short term or long term. This is all standard value coming from the AWA M55. Okay, cool. Uh, and then once we put in the pipe data, uh, we can put some uh, more soil data and for the barrier P pipe design, the soil data is critical uh, in terms of the load the pipe can handle. So the first the parameter, same thing. Uh, like all other barrier pipe design, we have to put the dry unit weight of soil and uh, uh, 120 uh, PCF um, is, is a pretty typical uh, we, we, we use for if you don't know the soil uh, properties. And depth of cover, uh, usually for railway crossing, we go a little bit deeper. Uh, let's say we let's try four foot for now. And uh, for trench width, uh, we have to base on the pipe outer diameter. Uh, let's say for 24 inch pipeline, the trench width has to be minimal 36 inch or potentially higher. So let's say it's gonna be um, 48 inch. Let's say 30, 30, 36. Okay, this is the minimal trench width. Uh, the trench embedment soil type, uh, this is all the typical soil categories uh, from the AWWA M55. So for this case, let's say the embedment soil we use is a fine grind soil with less than 25% content. And uh, to start, let's say we don't have any compaction for the embedment soil in the trench. Um, so let's assume 85%, which pretty much um, is, is the lowest uh, you can go. And for the native surrounding soil type, this is um, 
not the soil you put in the trench, and that is called an embedment soil. This is the soil um, outside the trench wall. So it's kind of the soil type it was there before. Um, so in this case, we can go from a really um, uh, the least conservative, very, very, very loose, granular, very soft, can hold cohesive, or to the rock. Uh, so in this case, I say we keep very, very loose granular. Uh, again, it, it's, uh, it sounds very loose term here, but this is actually from, from the standard. This is normally how we describe it for non-geotech engineers. And also for the leave low selection, uh, like I said, it's a railway crossing, so let's select the railway under E80 load. All right, so let's scroll down. On the left-hand side, we have a whole bunch of design parameters plotted based on inputs we put it above, and we can see the pipe um, outer diameter, which is we, we based on the size we selected. The bedding factor, uh, typical uh, values 0.1, and sometimes you can you can change change it to a different number if you know exactly what factor you want to use. So to manually change it, all you need to do is a tick here. And this all this cell here uh, becomes available for manual input. But normally, uh, we keep a point 0.1, OK? And time lag factor uh, is ranging, like I said, ranging from 1.25 to 1.5 for design purposes. Uh, at least personally, I, I always recommend using 1.5 to have a conservativity design. And the modulus embedment soil reaction, this is based on the soil properties we selected for the soil we're going to put in the trench. And also the, mod, the modulus of native soil reaction is the parameter based on the native soil we selected. And based on these two soil parameters, we can obtain a soil support factor, which is defined in, in a AWWAM55 as 0 0.50, okay? And then on this side, output data categories, we can say design modulus of soil reaction E is 250. Basically, this 250 is determined by the embedment soil reaction, the native soil reaction, and also the soil support factor. And there's a, there's a whole uh, section in the M55 uh, to show you how to calculate the design module of soil. And uh, based on the soil reaction, the, so the soil load and, and, and the leaf load can be calculated. Um, and then th the next one, uh, next input is, uh, is called a surcharge load. Um, normally the surcharge load is the distributed load to create pressure in the soil beneath the loaded area, such as the footings, the foundations, or bridge uh, uh, piles. Um, but this is not very common. If you know the value, you can click it and manually put it in a number. But if you don't know or there's no structure around the pipe, normally we keep it zero, okay? And the maximum allowable pipe deflection, this is the recommended uh, design deflection limits for pressure pipe. And uh, if you're dealing with a gravity pipe or non-pressure applications, uh, usually we can set the deflection limit to 7.5. And again, you can manually uh, take it in this box and you can manually put in uh, the percentage you want to use. But in this case, is a pressurized pipe, so we're gonna keep the, the default setting. Okay, and then uh, based on all the parameters, all the everything, all the inputs we put it in, we can see the pipe ring deflection is 9.21 and obviously is over 5% limits. So the design fails. So we need to do something. We need to make some necessary change to make sure the pipe can be safely cross the railway. Uh, there's a few things we can do, uh, obviously, the first thing we can do is to change the pipe spec. And as we can see is we already, the, the usually the pipe size is driven by hydraulics, cannot be changed, but a DR, uh, we can try DR9, which is a thicker wall, and see how well it, it goes. And then let's scroll down for DR9 pipe. 
it drops significantly, but it's still over the limits. As you can as you can see, the allowable pipe deflection limits actually change based on the DR you, you selected. So in this case, the allowable is 4.0, but the deflection we get still over 6%. So we need to do more uh, to make sure the design is acceptable. Let's take a look at the soil properties. The weight of the soil cannot be changed. The depth of cover is definitely something uh, that we can consider because the the deeper you bury the pipe, the less uh, leaf load you will see uh, from the surface. So let's say for railway crossing, the best practice is actually going to be more than nine feet uh, uh, deep. So let's call let's say now the pipe depth is nine feet deep, and we'll see what's going to be the change. Okay, so it's further reduced to 4.68% deflection, but still over the limit. So we're going to do more to, um, to make sure um, it, it is acceptable. Another thing we can do is change the embedment soil type. So this is, this is the soil. We put it in the trench above the pipe. So the better soil quality is the more compaction we have, the better support we have, and obviously there will be less um, load transfer to the pipe. So in this case, the first thing we want to change is to make the trench wider, right? It is not, it, it is easier for construction and also going to help the load the distribution for the pipe. So let's keep it a 48 inch and then let's say we're going to uh, keep this fine grain soils, but we're going to, we're going to do some compaction. Let's say we're going to do a compaction for 90%. Okay. And uh, the surrounding soil type cannot be changed. Uh, life load is the same. Let's see what's the, dis what's the D difference. Okay, cool. As you can see, by improving the embedment soil properties, we successfully reduce the ring deflection less than the, uh, the allow basically within the allowable pipe deflection range. So you can use this design and, uh, or you can make a further improvement, maybe compact it better and, 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 uh, and maybe consider even deeper trench. But for this design here, this is acceptable. So when we finish the cap calculation, we figure out the, the best the pipe spec and the trench design. And uh, like all our tools in our website, you can generate a really cool PDF report. Uh, you can put in all the project related information, developer, approver, reviewer. And for, for the presentation purposes, we can just uh, take a look at it uh, directly. So it's going to have a PDF report generated, really cool. It has all the data you put it in and all the data are generated. So you can, you can file this um, calculation uh, for future use. So for uh, one more thing, for users outside of the U.S., uh, for everyone else, you use metric system. So all you need to do is to tap here, uh, click on the metric. So if you do that, everything will change to metric units. Uh, it's going to be easier for the guys to, um, to do the calculations based on, you know, the metric units. So you don't need to do the conversion. Um, basically everything, the calculation factors is all the same is merely just, uh, just a unit, uh, will be changed. And if you do that, the report, we actually show, um, metric units as well. Okay, everyone, that's everything about this, uh, this tool developed for HTTP pipe, uh, buried case. Uh, please let us know if, if you have any questions or recommendations, uh, you can find our contact info on our, on our website. Uh, we are looking forward to uh, hearing from you. Thank you.